Pump up the volume on your parenting with Parent Pump Radio. Tune into something different that makes a difference. At Parent Pump Radio, instead of a ripple, we choose to create a splash. Get energized, get inspired, and get informed with how to parent in the new millennium. With your host and parent coach super guide, Jacqueline T.D. Wynn. This is Jacqueline T.D. Wynn. We're here to pump up your parenting skills, pump up your knowledge, and pump up your energy. Welcome to Parent Pump Radio. Our show is all about dynamic family leadership, becoming financially free, and leaving a profound legacy for your children. And this year, we've added family financial freedom as a major topic. Do you want to learn how to make money through real estate investing? Well, get my new book on Amazon called True Legacy Wealth, Creating Generational Wealth Through Real Estate Investing. Or maybe you're ready to start buying properties right now. Then join our True Legacy Wealth Turnkey Real Estate Investing Program. Turnkey means we do it all. We acquire, renovate, and manage for you. You get to purchase and prosper. We're your team in a package. All the properties are between $50,000 to $150,000, and they cash flow now. So sign up for a free membership, and you'll get a 45-minute complimentary consultation. Go to truelegacywealth.com or email me at info at integrativeminds.com. You can also get all the information in the show notes, and our show is available on iTunes, Google Play, Stitchers, YouTube, and syndicated on RethinkRadio.org, OneIdeaAway.com, and Armed Radio. Okay, so I'm rushing through that beginning because I'm so excited about my next guest. She is my soul sister, and if any time I wish I had a one-hour show, it would be right now. She is an international best-selling author, speaker, business strategist, and high priestess on a mission as queen maker who liberates women and mom out there to claim power, wealth, and impact in this world. Founder of the Light Warrior School and Priestess Leadership School, she empowers femipreneurs and children with tools to get wealthy in every way. Her new book, The Empowered Child, is available on Amazon. She is sought after expert for radio, podcasts, magazines, documentaries, and shows. When she's not sharing the stage with Deepak Chopra and Les Brown, she's having a living room dance party with her incredible husband and two little girls in Southern California. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to Mary Tan. Hi. Woohoo! Hey, thanks for that. <laughs> I know we don't get a chance to talk that much because we're so busy, but uh, I love when we get to at least be at each other's show. Absolutely. I know you've gotten to be on my show and I always love having you there too. I just love having another soul sister on the pathway of empowerment and doing this work in the world. Yeah. And, you know, sharing this light. And it was so great when we first met. I just felt like this instant connection with you of the divine light. And I think we have that same spiritual journey. Yeah, totally. <laughs> so let's get started because I know I have so many questions to ask you. I want to make sure that we get through it all. Let's talk about children. What do you think's wrong with children these days? I actually don't think there's anything wrong with children these days. I think it all stems from our ability to connect the dots between, and I'm going to talk about parents too, because if the parents can see the connection of connecting the dots between what they view as their children being difficult and connecting that to themselves of how was their relationship while they were a child with their parents and how they were parented. And then that's going to give them a lot of aha moments. And then connecting it back to the next generation before and back and back as far as you can go. And then when you connect those dots, you're going to see that there is a pattern. And so I don't actually think there's anything wrong with the children as much as there is. The times are changing so rapidly in the world today. And the children need parents to see themselves as the guide, as the facilitator, and as the leader. And when they can elevate themselves into that position, I like to talk to the moms and invite them to step into their queen positions 
so that they can raise up the partner to raise up into their power position. And then all of a sudden, the children are absolutely emulating what it is that the parents are vibrating out, whether it's through words, actions, ways of being, mindset, all of the above and more. And so I think the children are needing guidance, leadership from people who are continuing to expand their awareness, self-awareness, and the big picture of how everything is related. Yeah, have you found that every generation of children seems to get wiser and their soul is just so deep? I know I see that in my children. I mean, there's no way I could even think or be how they are now at that age. Totally agree with you. So uh, I don't know how spiritual and esoteric I can get on your show, but I'm just going to go there. Yes. <laughs> Because you kind of opened the door for me. I have a school called the Light Warrior School for Children. And the reason I have that is only because I have two little girls of my own. And so I get to see the families and the children of this generation coming through right now. And a lot of times the parents are getting woken up onto their spiritual path of self-awareness and expanding their consciousness because the children that's coming through them into their lives is activating them to ask, well, what is this life really about? All those things I used to do don't seem to fit, don't seem to work. And then they're in a place now to question everything, which is so beautiful. For some people, unless they have a child come through to cause these quote unquote discomforts, difficulties and challenges, unless that comes in, they don't have something that's gonna stop them and break that state of mind to question everything. And I think that's beautiful. And it's about healing old wounds, right? And, and breaking lineages as that's what we know. The pattern's going to be repeated. You said earlier, you look at how your relationship is with your parents and then their parent, your parents to their parents, and you'll see a pattern. So there's a way to break that. It doesn't have to continue. Our children of this light being nowadays, they are just there to kind of put a mirror in our face and say, let's heal this wound from the lineage and break the cycle. Yes, you took the words right out of my mouth, sister. <laughs> is that parents having children, and if you want to raise children consciously, if you want children who are conscious, confident, and connected, that means you are on a fast path to self-development within yourself. Because yes, they are absolutely going to reflect right away back to you, almost in real time, most times, what is happening within yourself, in your mind, subconscious mind, your beliefs, your emotions. And they're going to reflect that back. And if it triggers you, then it even more is a signpost, an invitation to say, hey, pause, mom and dad. What's happening within yourself and your own um, territory within you that needs a little bit more love? Too many parents, I think, start blaming the kids. If they could change, if they just heard me differently, then it would all be better. But like you said, it starts with, with always with us. And the thing is, in today's society, the way that the school systems have evolved, it's so very stressful from what I hear because my, you know, obviously I have a school here for my children as a solution to a problem that I see it's, um, out there. And this, what I'm hearing from parents who have children in public schools is that the stress, people are just rushing to get to the kids to school. It's a huge line just to drop them off. You got to park the car. I mean, it's a huge thing. It's a huge process. And every day they're starting the day this way. And then they have to rush off to work. And so everyone, they're always just trying to catch up. There's so much pressure, so much overwhelm. And when do you get to pause and just enjoy the moment and be present? And then the children come home with so much homework. The schools don't allow autonomy, emotional intelligence training, where they can have conflict, where adults are facilitators to teach you how to have effective communication, how to understand what's your emotions and what's behind the other person's emotions. All of these things, the soft skills are so important and the children are not getting it. So we're getting another generation of people who become adults who are so disconnected from their inner true power, that inner presence, that disconnection is what's happening and they're getting indoctrinated so young. And the problem there is if the parents aren't evolved yet, right, then they're just going to pass that on to their children. So let's talk about the parents. What's the most important mindset for parents to keep in mind when raising an empowered child? Yes, there's a few things. One is to know and remember that these children are coming through us into our lives as a blessing versus the old mentality that I own you because I gave you life. 
right? And when we just make that little shift, it's actually so huge because now you can actually respect this younger human, which actually is a wise spiritual being soul inside of a younger body. And we all have to go through that phase of growing up. And if we as the adults can realize we have this sacred role of holding the space and guiding them and teaching them the ropes of life to the best of our ability, allowing them to also make their own discoveries of using intuition and discernment and understanding what is good for them on their own accord, then we're really creating the next um, legacy of creating leaders leaders who can hear their own inner source power, leaders who know what works for them, what's good for them, and p being able to put boundaries. And, you know, there are some parents who just, I think they're at their wit's end. You can just see it kind of bubbling. Why do you think that some parents are feeling those things and other parents don't? Oh my God, I love that question because this is a beautiful question to just demonstrate that when we buy into what we think a good parent looks like, a good employee or business owner, whatever, good fill in the blank, wife, partner, we have so many roles that we play in this life. So let's talk about being a parent and being a partner and then you have to work or stay at home mom, which is a big job. There's these blueprints in your mind where you think this is what I need to do subconsciously to be good. And if we're good, then we're lovable and we're acceptable. Right. And so we buy into these external pressures from society, from the lineage, from our parents or partners, instead of tuning into our own inner guidance. Right. So we're not only teaching children how to do that. We first have to do that for ourselves. It's like the oxygen mask on the plane. We first have to be able to embody that personal power within that's what I call a, being a queen in your position. Then you can lift others in your family container to do the same. So parents that are feeling at wit's end, overwhelmed and stressed out, it's because you're trying to fulfill an external blueprint of what someone projected onto you as the definition of success. And so you want to just crumble that up and throw it into the fire and let it burn. And then come back in and recreate it yourself. And I think you and I love to meditate. A great way to get that is through meditation. And totally. Like, totally. Our, right? our time to de-stress and connect again to that inner soul, that inner child. I agree with you. I don't think there's really any other way. I used to say it kind of like, just sugarcoat it. Like, oh, you know, if you meditate, that's a great thing. It's foundational. But now I'm going to tell you, like, it's an absolute must. You want to call it prayer. Prayer is like you talking to the divine. Meditation is you connecting to that power within, which is an emanation of the divine, but you're listening. You are cultivating the empty bowl where every day you are dumping out what you think you know in your bowl and then sitting there and allowing wisdom to drop into you. To me, it's almost sometimes like I feel like I hit the restart button. They say you should always restart your computer once every other day. Really, I think my computer guy said, and because it needs to just reboot, that meditation is that point where you're like, ah, oh, this is rebooting. Yes, because it reboots you to remember why you're even here. Right. If we can recognize that there is some intelligence that's greater than us breathing life into all things, including you, me and all the children, then we have to remember instead of the rat race of trying to get the bills paid or fulfill some external projection of what is good and acceptable. That reboot is allowing us to connect back to why we are even here. And we are here just to remember that we are light, we are love, and that is it. The rest, <laughs> have fun with it. If you don't believe meditation, you should check out how many companies, Fortune 500 companies, militaries use it. I mean, statistics and data and research is out. Meditation is really a must. It is. Yeah, the, the data is there. Let's talk about that connecting to that inner child. You and I do believe that we have that inner child. But why does it matter? Why do we need to connect to that inner child? Yeah, some people even might ask, like, is, does everyone have an inner child? And my answer is absolutely yes. 
And the reason I say that is because, first of all, that's the line of work that I do, is that I help people reclaim the parts of themselves that when they were children and before they were able to fully understand how things were operating and why things were happening in their lives, they made these beliefs, these limiting beliefs sometimes that get stuck in their subconscious mind, which then as adults, whether in business, whatever role that you play, it becomes a limitation keeping you from the success that you want to create. So we have to go back and find those parts of ourselves that got shattered during times of trauma, big and small, any little nick, you know, emotionally, that a piece of yourself got stuck in that timeline back there. And how do you know that? Well, think about something that's really traumatic that happened in your childhood. And when you think about it, it makes you want to cry or it makes you feel like you're reliving that emotion. Why is that? It's because a piece of you is still stuck there. And so when you can go back there through these processes, I call it soul retrieval, you can bring every part of those pieces that have been shattered and stuck in time and bring it back. So you are actually bringing yourself back to wholeness. And when you can, you become a very powerful person, no matter what area of life you're talking about. Absolutely. What do you think the biggest takeaway is from your book? I think the biggest takeaway from my book, The Empowered Child, is that I want every parent to realize that they are a leader and they are a leader of themselves first and foremost in the most authentic, grounded way that we've been talking about this whole time so that they can automatically raise empowered children. A lot of parents want empowered children, but they're like, do as I say, not as I do. But of course, we all know that children and people learn by watching what we do. Yes, absolutely. Then your book is not just for the empowered child that you, your own children, but it's that empowered child within us. Exactly, exactly. So that's the sneaky part is that every parent wants to give their child the best start and the best future. But once they pick up the book, they realize, oh, I actually have a part of myself that I can empower as well. And the whole family gets empowered. And so what happens when you get connected to that inner child? How do we know how to heal that? Because I think all of our inner child wants to be whole and be happy. And we carry these negative emotions and, and trauma from our life's past and maybe even generationally. Once we get there, how do you suggest to heal that? Honestly, I feel that finding a professional who knows how to do that kind of work, whether it's through neuro-linguistic programming, hypnosis, soul retrieval, but you, you want to, it's a process, right? It took this many decades to become an adult that have all these wounds that are still stuck out there. It's not going to be an overnight success. You're not going to go to the gym one day and have like ripped body when, you know, you still have a hundred pounds to lose. It's a process. America especially is so used to like a one pill wonder and like, let's just have it instantly um, for things to last and be sustainable and authentically embodied within you and transform and evolve. It doesn't have to take forever, but you do have to have a realistic expectation that it's going to be a process. So, I mean, there's systems, there's strategies, and there's actual tools. For, get, for like, just to give a tool to the listeners today so they have something to take with them, is to practice self-awareness. Just that be able to step outside of your body sometimes. And in meditation is such a great way to do it where you can actually pretend. For me, it's not pretending. But for you, if you're a beginner, pretend that you can lift outside of your body, whatever room you're sitting in or space. And you're lifting like to the corner of the room, witnessing yourself below. If you can have that sort of separation, it allows you to view things factually without the emotional um, cords attaching and pulling you down sometimes so that you can't see clearly. So that's a really quick tip that people can practice daily because the more you do it, the stronger it gets. And then it becomes real time. It's as if you're just breathing. So you can go through your day and have that level of awareness. One of the things that I've noticed and kids that I've spoken to and us being a child one time is this emotional intelligence. Uh, a lot of parents seem to be yelling, just blasting their emotion out at the moment, however they feel, they say things, they do things that they normally wouldn't have said or do if they didn't have their emotion in check. And I feel like sometimes the reaction doesn't even make sense to what the situation is. What do you say to a parent like that? Because I think some parents think, oh, I can just say I'm sorry and you'll forgive me or you should forgive me. 
Or maybe they just don't say anything and they think time will heal all wound. Or if they're old school, they just think that's the way the hierarchy is and they don't even have to feel any regret for it, right? Because that's they don't- true. What do you say to parents that react that way? Yeah. And first of all, I want to say that I'm not perfect. This may be my area of expertise because I spend so much time in it. I've gone through a difficult childhood myself. And so I think a lot of times when people overcome certain tragedies, traumas, and difficulties, it becomes their passion to help others. Um, so I'm certainly not perfect. I do my best. And that's number one is like, don't expect yourself to be perfect, but do be aware that it has a lasting impact. The way, the way that you speak, what you're saying, um, what you're communicating, and then how you do or don't come back and make good with it, like, you know, harmonize it and lead the child forward. So number one, parents, I want you to realize that if you are reactionary, it's okay. I've certainly caught myself. I give my child the opportunity to call me out. And I think this is fresh and new because um, most old school mentality will not have that because there's a hierarchy of authority. And because I view the child as a wise being that happens to be in a younger body, um, I have a lot of respect for this person. I know that they're going to become an adult and they have a big purpose on this planet. So I'm doing my best to give them the tools that's going to allow them to go into the world but not be of the world, meaning they can go out and fulfill their per purpose and mission without being bombarded by all the negativities happening out there. So if I get out of balance and I'm reactionary, I'll say me because I am not perfect. I will allow my child to have the opportunity to call me out. And when they do, I say, oh, I need a moment. I'm going to go like get myself back in alignment. I'll go meditate. I'll go do what I need to do. That's number one. <laughs> Because then they're not going to think I'm perfect. Then they're not going to expect themselves to be perfect, to which a lot of adults have that challenge. They're afraid to take risks in life and fulfill their purpose and mission because they're afraid to make mistakes. And it all goes back to childhood. Uh, number two, parents who feel like um, if they get reactionary, I want you to know this, is that depending on what age your child is, and depending on what age, when you were a child and received traumas that you have not yet digested, that child will trigger and push those buttons to let you know that there's something within your subconscious mind that you have not yet looked at. Did that make sense? So, you know, if you're finding that like, so I'll give you an example of myself. I recently found out, my conscious mind recently found out that when I was six years old, I was sexually abused by um, my father. So when my child turned six during that year, actually she's six now and about to turn seven, that's when the memory started to come up and it manifested in all different ways until I did the investigative work, inner work within myself until I finally found that. Um, and so it doesn't have to be that traumatic, but it's just an example of what can happen. Yeah, it, you're right. For a child before the age of eight or nine, everything is taken into the subconscious. Every word, everything you say. So even something you think is minute, it could be very, very powerfully painful. Definitely. Yeah. Let's go back to your book because we can go really deep in all this. <laughs> <laughs> How does your book in Power Child fit into this woman, this queen maker that you are? Yes. Uh, so I see myself as the queen maker, someone who talks to women, especially fempreneurs who are here to make a difference in the world. And how do you have a system and strategy so that you can feel like you are ruling your domain in all of these areas, all the hats that you have to wear as a woman. Women are so incredibly powerful. I mean, we are the only gender that can give life. So this piece, The Empowered Child, and this book is one part of empowering the woman to be able to have her domain, right, her home. It's, it's allowing you to create this home container because I, I fold in a little bit of feng shui and energy clearing within the book because that was something that I used to do as well. And when you have a home container so powerful and strong and clear, your external space is great. I teach you how to have your internal space empowered as well within your mind, body, and spirit. This is how you get onto your mountaintop in your throne. 
Then, like I said earlier, you can invite your partner to rise up because once you claim your power, divas, it's going to shake things up. Everybody around you is going to have to recalibrate to your newfound way of claiming power, space, and voice. And so you have to maintain your position knowing that they are going to rise up. They just need some time to recalibrate. And then your children, you're going to have tools to empower them, empower you, have communication skills. And then everybody is operating like all pistols are running, pistons are running, everything is running like a machine. And then that's just one piece of how to be a queen if you're having your own business, businesses, and all the other roles that you play. Awesome. Oh my gosh. So how can the listener participate in, gosh, your global movement to empower children of this world and just follow you? Yes. The best way to follow me is go to Instagram. You can find me there by Mary Tan Empowers with an S on the end. Mary Tan Empowers on Instagram, or you can email me Mary at Mary Tan Empowers.com. You can listen to all of her live feed because you do a lot of Facebook live and I've been on your show and you have so many great guests on your show. So it is amazing. Thank you so much, Mary, for being on the show and connecting again. Thank you so much, Jacqueline. You're amazing. And it's always a pleasure to be with you. Thank you. So the quote of the week, when you talk, you are only repeating what you already know. But if you listen, you may learn something new. And that's by the Dalai Lama. So until next time, listeners, always be learning and always be growing. Thank you so much for joining us today. Go to parentpumpradio.com and click on the pink box on the top of our homepage to listen to our new and archived shows. To be instantly notified of new episodes, subscribe to our RSS feed. The RSS feed button is located at the top of the page where all our shows are featured. And after listening to the show, go to parentpumpradio.com or our Facebook page to leave your comments, questions, and topic suggestions. And while you're at our website, sign up to receive a free gift. Until next time, have a wonderful week.